Today I am reviewing Assassin's Creed Black Flag and the Rogue, also known as the Rebel Collection for the Nintendo Switch. And thank you for the review code to Ubisoft. So Assassin's Creed Black Flag is my first Assassin's Creed game. Never touched the series before this. Never. So my expectations, I didn't have any. I had only seen gameplay and it looked fine. And you know, it was a um, piratey RPG game for the Switch. In the first hours of this game, I actually didn't like it. Mm, I didn't like it because mainly what I first noticed was that the character moves incredibly slow uh, in his default walking speed. Now you can hold in a sprint button and then he sprints really fast. But the initial and first walking speed, incredibly slow. I still think it, it's really slow and weird. So it's either really slow that you can walk or you run really fast. There is no middle thing. I wish there was a sort of more middle thing, but this is an older game. It is from 2013, actually. Some other things that I didn't like in my first hours was that, and you will know what I mean, uh, some of the first missions are very restricted and linear. Uh, there's a follow mission and there is a infiltrate the fort mission. And to someone that is completely new to the series, I didn't really understand. So it took me personally some time and quite a bit of hours to get into this game. So after a few of those missions in the beginning of the game, which took me probably five hours, then the game opens up and you have control of your ship and you can sail anywhere. That is when you get the open world open sea uh, part of the game. That was when I started liking this game. Now that out of the way, this is an action adventure game by Ubisoft. It is out on PS4, Xbox One, PS3, Xbox 360, Wii U, believe it or not, PC, and now Switch. So it's out everywhere. It is a stealth game. It is a stealth game. Heavily focused on story, so a lot of cutscenes, a lot of stealth stuff linear quests and missions that once you start a mission you are in that mission and you you know linear and it is also full of ship elements controlling a ship and ship combat that is the introduction for this game so the story it is set in the 18th century caribbean setting which is fine i like piratey settings i don't know how much you know about assassin's creed but anyways abstergo is a current day company that has animuses which means small simulation boxes that a human being can step into and relive memories of dead people through their dna so that is exactly what is happening. So you relive Edward Kenway's memories and he lived in the 18th century. And Edward is a guy that wants to be a privateer. So he says to his girlfriend that I will be gone one year. And uh, after some struggles and stuff that is happening, Edward finds himself becoming a pirate. He kills a guy and takes his clothes because he sees profit in posing as him in a meeting at the city of Havana. And he gets himself caught up in many different things. Bear with me, this is my first Assassin's Creed game, so it was a lot to take in for me with the story. There are a bunch of conspiracies and a bunch of characters and a bunch of assassination contracts. So that is the setting and the start of the story. Gameplay. This is not a run and gun game. It's not built like that. It is not supposed to be like that. It is a stealth game. Very heavily focused on stealth. You hide in bushes, you whistle, and you assassinate people from the bushes. You climb everywhere in this game also. He's a master climbsman. All main characters in the Assassin's Creed series are master climbsmen. I don't understand why no one is pointing that out, but they are. It is incredible. They never get tired. 
sort of thing. So the gameplay is sometimes linear. You know, you have to play that start section of the game and it is an open world. You can sail anywhere. That is the fun part of the gameplay. Actually, the freedom to visit a bunch of islands and complete them because every island and every location has points of interest on the map. And uh, I like that. I love it because when I complete an area or see the map slowly being completed, it is just satisfying. Very satisfying. So you can also uncover the map and you do that by taking down some big forts, as you can see here. There is a bunch of sailing in this game and ship combat. You can upgrade your ship and you can upgrade or buy swords and daggers and guns. That is the equipment that you use in battle. A bunch of islands and collectibles. I mean, just look at this map. The controls, I feel, are bad. It feels not very tight. So controls are just not very controlly. There are Abstergo challenges. I actually liked these challenges. It is put in a neat little list and this game has a bunch of freedom when you are not inside a linear mission. It has fast traveling, which is really nice in a world this big. There are resource collecting, which is like lumber and cloth, and you can find that out at sea. If you take down an enemy ship, you will get a lot of resources that way as well. There are main sequences, side missions, side activities, and a bunch of collectibles. So there is actually a lot of things to do in this game, and it is nice. Graphics. They are wonderful. Handheld and in docked because this is an older game, so it is supposed to look like this. I think it is one of the better looking Switch games, so no complaints here. I like the graphics. They perform really well. Yeah, the graphics are good in this game. I stay by that. But you can see that it is dated. You get what I'm saying. Music. Music is very adventure-y and action-packed and piratey. That is the thing. But it is not very memorable. It is sort of like movie soundtracks in a way. And you don't necessarily go wrong by having music like that. So I actually also listened through the entire official soundtrack on YouTube. But nothing was really memorable. So the music is very forgettable. It is there. Is fine, not very memorable. Verdict. This game takes, for me anyway, took for me some time to get used to and it may be like that for you as well. It is really good once you get into it. Let me have that on the screen. It is really good once you get into it. Take some time to get into it though. There is plenty of value in this game and things to do. I enjoy to uncover the map and I try to 100% every place that I get to for collectibles. That is something I enjoy doing. This game has opened my eyes for the series. This is my first Assassin's Creed game and it opened my eyes that much that I played Origins and I'm done with that game and now I'm playing Odyssey. So this was for me my entryway into the series. A nice entryway. It was actually Switch Ups's review that got me interested. Fun fact. I was uh, addicted and I played it for days. This is a really nice game to have on the Switch and I know I reviewed Black Flag now. A short little comment on Rogue. It is an equally big game. It is a game. It is not a, like a DLC or anything like that. It is a mainline game, but it takes place some time after Black Flag because you play as the son of Edward in Rogue. And in Rogue, I like that game. Maybe more, too early to say. I haven't completed Rogue yet, but the ship you sail with in Rogue is faster, so I feel like they improved on some things in Rogue. Also excellent game. You get a bunch of value in 
the Rebel Collection for the Switch. The Rebel Collection gets an 8 out of 10 from me because of the value and it is good once you get into it. Now, uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, I will see you later.